Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to a, well, the last Hobby Nightmares of the week. I'm coming down with a cold right on in time for the weekend. But hey, the football's on later, so I'm going to need to get this done now. Hopefully, you're having a wonderful week, and this is the end of it. If it's not, and you're working over this weekend, then I can only say thank you for keeping the world spinning when we're all having some time off. So, let's get into it, shall we? Before I do anything, we have another video coming up today at 6.30pm, so make sure that uh, if you're watching this one, make sure you watch that one as well. This one should finish around about then. So, head on over there, watch that one, and make sure that you're supporting both videos, because I know it's not normal that I do two videos in a day, but you know, I was feeling the whimsy, and I thought, sod it, I'll do it, you know, and I did two videos instead of one. So, lucky you, you're getting two videos today, just to finish off your week, or if you're working tomorrow, to salve the wound that is working over the weekend. Our first hobby nightmare today is from Morgan. He says, hello, Mr. Exile. I like him, mister. One for the hobby nightmares. Also, feel free to use my real name, Morgan. I have done. So, I was at my local gaming cafe, Geek Retreat, a few weeks ago. Also painting my nuns and guns. Uh, basically, your, your sisters of battle. It was D&D &D night, but they're happy to welcome anybody who wants to get on with their own thing. So, I get set up and start painting, and there's a D&D &D campaign happening next to me. Not to my knowledge, uh, when I sat down, but there was a very loud and, from what I'm guessing, autistic kid playing in the campaign. Okay. Before I say any more, I'm quite antisocial. I struggle with anxiety and socialising with people I don't know. It's quite a struggle. Okay, fair enough. Not soon after I sat down, the kid got up in the middle of the D&D game and came over unannounced. Started talking about some obscure 40k lore and showed a lot of interest in my models. Now... I'm one for getting new people into the hobby, and it was nice to see a younger person so passionate about what I'm doing. But to say the least, it put me a bit on edge, as I'm, as I said, very antisocial. It happened a few more times after that, and by now, I had my AirPods in, so I didn't realise he was there. I'd, if I did notice him, I would just nod in agreement, and then his dad would call him over back to the campaign when he needed something doing. I didn't really know how to tell him I needed to concentrate on my painting, so it just felt rude. So I just let it slide. Soon enough, he was coming over and picking up my models without asking. Again, I didn't know how to say, don't do that, without seeming snarky or rude. It progressed further than this. He came over and found my AirPod case in my bag, which was, which was on the table and seemed to show a lot of interest in it, as it has a Pokemon case on it. He stopped after that. Either his dad had a word with him or he just lost interest. I usually go to Geek Retreat to stop myself procrastinating uh, painting and just get on and do some models. But this was hands down one of the most distracting painting sessions I've ever had. And for someone who doesn't like social interaction too much, it really put me on edge for the rest of the day. Okay, right. First of all, very sorry that happened. Uh, second of all, um, how do I put this? How do I put this? I'm going to be honest with you, Morgan. Okay. Um, this is a situation. I understand that you're antisocial and things like that. But this is a situation that could have been solved with a word. Literally, just, just saying to the dad, Hey, man, look, I'm trying to paint. Do you mind like, having your kid over there with you? Just, you know. Or just simply, you know, talking to the kid for a little bit. So a lot of autistic uh, kids, uh, I've worked with quite a few, is when they go into a situation and they are talking to you, if you talk to them and you give them engagement for two or three minutes, like total engagement, they will break off and go away eventually. Not because they get bored, but they've had their fill. They're much much the same as you. That like their, their, their limit for social interaction is very low. So as soon as you give them that response and you talk to them, either they get overawed by the conversation or they just they just bug out and walk away. So if you're ever finding that self, yourself in that situation again, stop what you're doing, entertain the kid, talk to him for two or three minutes and he will go away. If you can't manage that, then I would say therapy is the biggest thing that you could go and get yourself into. Because what you're describing here is not a very stressful situation at all. I would even hazard that it's not really a hobby nightmare. It's more of a when you were slightly perturbed one day. This is the kind of thing that uh, anyone else would be like, this wouldn't even be a footnote in their day. But this is something that has defined your day for the rest of the day. You need therapy, my friend, because this is not, this is not normal. Um... It, it's simply not normal to, to, to sit there and, and have an autistic kid be around you for a, like an hour, you know, just hovering around, doing their own thing, and just tune them out. If you can't tune them out, 
and you have social anxiety, that has a lot to do with it. And I'm not saying that you don't have it. You clearly do. Best way to to do to do it is with therapy and with talking to people and getting it out there. This is a really good step, by the way. What you've done here is a, is a fantastic first step in getting it out your system and making sure that it's been seen to. So congrats to you. Cheers with my Yorkshire tea. But yeah, therapy. Go. and uh, Or talk to me. Talk to anyone. Just get it out there. And if you, if you get in a situation like that, again, all I can say is the best way to get over certain types of antisocial behavior and social, antisocial um, feelings is to immerse yourself in it. It's like, uh, it's like sunburn. That's how it's been described to me from other people who've had it. It's, it's like sunburn. If you go in a hot shower, it stings for the first few few minutes, and then the sting just goes away. It doesn't sting for the rest of the night because your because your nerves are overloaded, so it doesn't sting, right? So, I would say it's just, it, it, well, from what they've told me, it's a very very similar way. So make sure you're immersing yourself in it. Make sure you're talking to people, and you know, if the kid does it again, entertain him for two or three minutes. He will move away. He's autistic. That's what they do, right? They, he will move away and get bored. Not get or well, not even get bored. Just go on to the next thing, right? So. Chocobo Knight says, Hi Exile, I'd like to tell you a story that has a lesson that some of your viewers might see as valuable in their own lives. Okay. This is a story about me and a friend of mine. I won't be leaving my name for this one. I met my friend several months ago as he was continuously hanging around at my local store. Okie dokie. He had come from out of state but was homeless due to unknown reasons. That's always a red flag, dude. Like, you know, it, 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 it's... Life happens, but... If I'm homeless, the last place I go is to the hobby store. You know, just, just saying. Even though he was living in his car with limited room, he still owned an army and loved to play. Now, there you go. See? Like, like what what's going on there? And that sounds horrible for me to say, but, like, like there's something going on there. You can be homeless, but, like, get that... That, that should be your top priority. Not being homeless. Your top priority shouldn't be, let's go and play with some Warhammer models. It should be, let's not be homeless. Um, just a red flag, that's all. This doesn't mean that this person's bad. I, I would just treat it as a red flag if I found out. Uh, once I learned about his backstory, I tried helping him out here and there. I would buy lunch. I would let him use my shower. I even got him a part-time job at my place of business. Dude, you are really going above and beyond here, Chocobo Knight. Well done. Lucky for me and him, he wasn't a drug addict or alcoholic. I was glad because this never ended in a dramatic catastrophe like those things tend to, tend to bring. However, due to his own actions, I did start to lose sympathy for him. I saw my friend waste money he had as he was starting to get ahead. He was still buying models. I even 3D printed some for him to use as proxies, but he, didn't, but he wanted the real thing. It was sad in its own way because I started to realise that he might not be in a situation because of poor circumstances, but for poor, but for but for continual poor financial choices. I tried to ex excuse this to some degree, but maybe this is this was a lifeline he had come to happiness or no, or normalcy. Yeah, and he's throwing it back in your face, dude. That's what he's doing. But at a certain point, any wise person needs to realise that this lifeline was also holding him back. I, I, I accept that I can't fix his life for him, and he's still consider him a friend, but my charity has run out. If it's a lost cause, how much effort should I put in? Several months later, he is still living out of his car, where he doesn't come to our store anymore. I saw him, and he says he is usually at, an, at another side of the city. What do I do? Um, so, I will first say, first of all, well done to you, Chocobo Knight, for attempting to be a, a hobby chad here. Not attempting, but actually being one for somebody. Well done. Number two... Um, you're already having the right feelings. You, you've extended a hand to this person. They've slapped it away in their own way. Fair enough. You move on. You move on. Like like you, you cannot sit down with this person. I used this in my last in my last video, of you know, it was somebody sitting down, depressed, can't move. Life's a life's a bitch. They can't do anything. They're sitting down, and you come up to them, and say, "Hey, you know, get up. Let's go. You know, I, I'll help you." And they say, no, I don't want any help. Okay, you move on. You don't stand there with them. Because your life, everything around you is already moving on. You've got to move on with your life. Get on with it. Okay, you go. You will come around again. And when you come around again, hey, do you need some help now? No, they slap your hand away. Okay, you leave again. You come around a third time. 
three strikes, you come on the third time, you offer the help sometime down the road. And if they still don't want it, cut them adrift. Off you go. See you later. All right, fine. You come to me now when you are ready for help, and I might give it to you, and I'm, or I might not. You had your three chances, I'm out. See ya. That's the only way to look at people who are desperately, desperately, desperately in a bad way, but do not want the help. You cannot make somebody want help. You cannot make somebody want to change. It's like drugs. You can't make somebody want to get off drugs. They have to get off them themselves. And it's the same with people who are depressed. They have to want to stop being depressed themselves. I find this a lot when depression is brought on by somebody's own actions. A lot of these people are so self-loathing and so self-harming internally that they don't want to stop feeling depressed because they feel like they deserve it in a certain way. Again, these are people who can only be helped when it's time for them to be helped when they're, when they're ready. But there are certain people who are, who are in a black hole and they never come out. And all you're going to do by doing that is, is dragging yourself in there too, by sticking around. You need to be there to help people who want to be helped, or, or if there's a glimmer that they want to be helped, be around, be there. But for years, if years and years and years go past and this person is still doing the same destructive behavior, maybe that's just how they live. Maybe that's just, that's just how they cope with their own inner demons and they don't want you there. If they don't want you there, their, their life is their choice. Leave. Just leave. That's it, right? You can't bring the burdens of the world onto yourself. Your life's hard enough, Chocobo Knight, all right? So you've done the right thing. I would say to him, if he's still working in your place of business, say, hey, man, an honest interve intervention may be needed, where you just say, look, lay it out for him. I'm very concerned. He's still living in your car. This isn't normal. You're spending all your money on models. As much as I don't want to be the guy to say, do this or do that, I'm worried about you. I want to be friends. Here's how I think you're going wrong. How can I help? Right? If he asks you for money, don't give it to him. Right? You've already given him a job. Say, no, I've given you a job. What else do you need me to help you look for a place to live? Do you need me to help your budget? Do you need me to help you set some, some targets for yourself to hit financially in a week of savings, right? I can do that. Do anything that doesn't cost you money. That's fine. Apart from, like, sleeping with him. That'd be weird. But, you know, anything that doesn't cost you money within reason. Do that. And if he doesn't want the help, move on. Move on. That is my uh, suggestion to you. AMS Rocker says, Hi, North. I have two stories for you. One hobby nightmare and one good one. First up, the hobby nightmare. So I'm an old school gamer. I've been around the block. I started in the, in the late 80s playing Battletech and Warhammer 40,000. Oh, good choices. I was playing Space Marines and Squats. Excellent. I still have everything. I kept it all. Over 40 Battletech mechs and my 40,000 Space Marines and Squats. I'm guessing it's from Warhammer 40,000. You don't actually have 40,000 of them. My god, the price of squats on eBay. I had no idea. I got out of the hobby that I played the hell out of as a teen that it was going to be this expensive. The reason is, when I got out of, of high school, because my dad's job was moved to another, st uh, another state, and I went into the military, and then life just kind of took over. I have no idea why I did, I did not look for people to play with in my new state. None. Fast forward almost 30 years. I got back into 40k because my younger brother who got back two to four years earlier than me, kept slipping off about how... Uh, slipping off, in uh, I think, in his means, means he, he, he's shouting off, he, he's, he's being, a, being a bit of a dick, kept slipping off about how he was a better painter than I ever was. Challenge accepted. I took up Necrons and kicked out my first painted mini in 30 years. Needless to say, my brother stopped talking smack. Yeah, 18 years in a, in a model railroad club kept my painting skills rather sharp. So I took a trip to see my brother, and he whipped up a 40k game with his friend, and it was to be just uh, just for fun, all out barroom brawl. Okay, three versus three. Teams were picked at random, and we had we and we then had points dished out at 2,000 points per player. <clears throat> okay. We even made a house rule that if a vehicle failed an explosion roll, we had to re-roll that. Okay. We were looking for carnage. We set up and away we went. We were all having a blast. Good choice of words there. Laughing like kids at vehicles exploding all over the place. That was that was turning our number of heads as others in the shop could not believe the magnitude of our game and what we were actually moving and that we were actually moving it along quite nicely. 
there was this one guy, we will call him Tim. Now, I had not been pre-warned about Tim. Okay, here we go. Getting to the good stuff. Tim is one of those guys that you talk about a lot. He's the authority of rules. Even if you show him the in, in the book, in black and white, he is going to argue it. Okay, whatever. Well, to be honest with you, man, like, if you show it to somebody in the book and they still argue with it, I mean, there's no winning at that point, because you've literally showed him it in black and white. As long as you're not misinterpreting the rules, you know, you, 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 you're showing it in black and white, that's fair enough. Well, Tim was also throwing these special dice that were extremely hard to tell what he was rolling. He, he knew, and he was happy that he, he was the only one that could tell what he was rolling. Okay, number one, that, that, that's cheating 101. I would say, if I can't tell what you're rolling, roll proper dice. I don't care, roll proper dice. As the game went on, Tim would just start rolling dice, and then after a bit, he would just start pointing at people and pop off. You owe me eight saves at minus two on these guys, and four saves on that group over there at minus one. No one had seen his rolls, and he did not declare his shots. It was just... It was just that arrogant shit attitude that we should just trust him and not question him either. We did not let him spoil our fun and went on with the game. After all, it was just a barroom brawl and it was just for laughs. I actually got all four, five rounds done. Unreal. After that, my brother uh, and I said to each other that we, that we would never play with Tim again. You could use this story to teach younger players how to deal with guys like Tim in shops and tournaments on your channel, I guess. Okay. My second story is a good one. The gaming shop that I grew up uh, playing in was run by a guy named Bob. Bob was a great guy. So many great memories there at the small shop. Fast forward 30 years, Bob had merged with another shop, and his new shop is now 8 to 10 times the size. I looked him up on Facebook and shot him a long message. I thanked him for putting up with me for all those years. I wanted him to know how just one of the many snot-nosed little shits turned out in life. I told him about my profession and military service, and my family. He did message me back. In true Bob form, it was short and sweet, but I knew that he was happy for me and how it turned out. Thanks and cheers for all the best, North. Okay, that's cool. That's always cool, man, where, where people get their just desserts in life. So, yeah, the guy you played in 40k is a bit of a douche nozzle, and I'm not even going to pull any punches there. You you plainly deserve to be a bit angry with him. I, I, I would have probably highlighted this behavior a lot a lot earlier and said look man you're not rolling your dice properly you need to tell me what you're shooting at and when so i know you know I i'm following along with the game if this was a one versus one game we would this would this wouldn't be a good game this is a narrative style hobby that we're in you need to tell me what you're shooting at and when and even if it's not narrative style even if it's competitive and you're in a you're in a tournament that, would, that wouldn't fly. Like, the rolling dice and saying, you owe me this and you owe me that, that wouldn't fly. So, on both sides of the hobby, this is the wrong way to play. I very rarely say that, that it's the wrong way to play, but that is categorically the wrong way to play. Do not just roll your models and say, and pick, them, pick your dice up and roll your models. Roll your dice and say, and you pick them up and say, right, you owe me this, you owe me that. That's not the way to play. You are literally asking for trouble at that point. How this guy has not been called, called up as a cheater before this, I do not know. But yeah, either don't play him again, or if you do, say, yeah, that's not going to happen, sorry. That you need to roll properly, and tell us what you're shooting at and when. That's how 40k is played. I'm sorry, it just is. That's, that's just how we're going to play it. Right, okay. So, on to a story that I know has been uh, giving people a few, like, uh, starts on the Discord over the past couple of weeks, with uh, messages that I've been getting. So, let's have a little read of it, shall we? After a cup of tea. Reichenval says, Hey North, this is a bit of a serious one in that it deals with some real life stuff and also the hobby as a whole going forwards. In short, my hobby has been completely poisoned by what has happened and I am honestly not sure if I can go on with it anymore. Okay, well I don't like the wording of that, so let's, let's get into this, shall we? So I am 36 and I live in Canada, which is a lovely place to live in when the government isn't trying to put you all in camps or telling you where to go, or what to do, or what who to be on a daily basis. You think I joke, 
but it got that bad over 2020 when it happened. I've been with my wife for 12 happy years. We're both hobbyists, with myself collecting mainly Dark Angels, and my wife collecting Black Legion. She eventually migrated over to playing a force entirely of Fallen, which means we have had lots, and, and I say hundreds, of gruesome grudge matches uh, that look extremely cinematic at hobby stores and things like that. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Once this was my hobby, alone, I got into 40k in school and never really looked back. I spent long summers with friends in the US traveling down the west coast and playing and constantly playing 40k campaigns at people's houses and hobby stores. It really meant the world to me and it never really lost its luster. When I met Michelle, my wife, name changed, in 2011, I knew things had changed suddenly. I was in my mid-twenties and working a dead-end job and going nowhere, but when I met her things sort of clicked into place for me in my life. We gelled together so well and, and ended up attending our first Hot 40k events together. She was not into the hobby at all at the time, but just wanted to go with me. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I can. L listen, right, if you meet a good one, or at least somebody who, who pertains to be a good one, they will be into all the stuff you're into. Because they're seeing worth in you. So they want to see what you're into. And also, like all of you guys who say that women don't like 40k... If you go in there and you and you just like oh, you own it, you own the fact that you like 40k and it's great and yeah, no one's gonna have a go at you for that. And if they do, you don't want to be with them anyway. From there, we went from strength to strength and life generally took off. I'm working as an architect now and she is in law. Excellent. Then 2020 happened. Like many couples, we had a lot of pressure put on us. Yeah, mine too, man. Mine too. I realised that 2020 came. Uh, came to an end, neither of us had touched our armies in over six months. Recently, I recognise this has become somewhat of an allegory for our relationship, unfortunately. Right, that, that's horrible. Yeah, I can understand that though, man. Like, yeah. He says, We started to drift apart. Slowly at first, but faster and faster until, until in mid-2021, she finally sat me down and told me she had had enough, that it was over. We talked back and forth, tried restarting the relationship a few times, but nothing really worked. When we had our final talk, we had gone on a long walk and talked the night away about the future. Finally, she stopped me and told me to my face that she was done. And to be honest, it felt like I'd been pushed into a black hole. All right, so. Normally, I would say this is 50-50, but you saying that to me, that you felt that way, tells me that this wasn't 50-50 and you were the one trying to hold the relationship together. Um, I'm going to come up and be clear here. I think she's got somebody else. I'm... Nobody just drifts like that. If, if, if You know what I mean? No one just does an about face and is like, that's it, I'm done, that sort of a thing. They, they generally don't do that, is what I'm saying. Um, I'm not saying she was with somebody during the relationship. I'm saying in that period there that, that you're that you're looking at when you were off and on, off and on, off and on, trying to get things started again. Th there's something going on here. Um, you don't string somebody like that along. I, I honestly think this is kind of like toxic behavior, but we'll see if it is later on. To be honest, though, this was not the hard part. Okay. All right. Weeks passed of constant depression and anger. I'd always had a depression problem. I'd been diagnosed with it, and it's never really left me alone. 40k was one crutch that I would use. Uh, 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 I would use a lot to dig me out. After a few weeks of constant pain, I gritted my teeth, packed my models that we had painted together. That's, that's the hard bit, man, isn't it? Like even your models are like reminding you of it. And took my army to my local GT with a few friends. That is grand tournament for people who don't know what that means. Um, but you're doing the right thing, man. You're, you're completely doing the right thing. You're gritting your teeth. You're getting out there. You're crying it out. You're crying it out. You're getting out your system. And you're getting out there. And you're taking the sting out of all the things that you that you used to do with her. What I did was all the places that I went to in Liverpool, in my local city, with my ex, who, who is now who is back in America, um, I went there within a few weeks of coming back home. Just to take the sting out of thinking, my God, the last time I was here... <laughs> Right, I just took this thing out of it. I, I went within the first few weeks and was like, "No, I'm going to go to that cafe that we liked. I'm going to go to that gaming store that we liked. I'm going to go. To, I'm going to go to everywhere that we liked." And I'm just going to be like, "Okay, this is where I am," you know. 
Um, a bit of advice for guys dealing with breakups, by the way. Uh, large and small. Let me just have a little taste of water, a taste of uh, tea. Yeah, a little, a little advice for people who go through breakups, large and small. Whether you've been with her for a few weeks or a month or, or two months or six months or, or years. The only way to deal with a breakup, the only way, if she breaks up with you, is to say, okay, and leave. That's it. You say, all right, and leave. They, women are always shocked. They may not tell you in text. They may not tell you over the phone. They may not even speak to you for months or, or years afterwards. But they are always shocked by this and hurt. The fact that you just go, okay, and walk off like it's nothing. They're shocked and hurt because they, they think that they they need to be pined after and chased after and things like that. No, just leave. Just leave. Just leave. Just say, all right, bye. All right. I know it's hard. I know that's hard. I know it's ridiculously hard. But here's, here's another thing to say. If she queries why, she's like, okay, you just leave. Okay, you don't want to talk about it. All you need to say is, listen, I need to be with somebody that knows my worth, that knows how much of a good guy I am and knows my worth and wants to be with me. Clearly, that's not you. You don't value me at all, or we wouldn't be having this conversation. So see ya. I need to go and find someone else. See ya. Right? You say that to a woman... That is going to like break down like the, the entire process of of the, of the of the breakup, right? That's going to be that's going to explode her brain. She's going to be like, well, well, hang on a minute, you know what? What this guy must have some self worth, you know? Now, I'm not saying that as a get back with her kind of a thing. I'm saying that to to have your ownership of it. Some women you don't need to do this all of this with. Some women are cool enough that you can just say, okay, and leave, and they'll get the message. But some women need it explaining. You say, no, no, I need someone who values me, and that's clearly not you. So bye, you know. So I'm not saying that uh, you need to do this with every single woman. Some some people you need to do it a little bit with. Some people need to, to lean into it quite a lot. But yeah, just leave. Just leave. I know it's the hardest thing in the world, but I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. The one thing I really hate myself for when I was in America, when my big relationship broke apart, was that I didn't do that. I tried to, to fix it. I should have just left. I should have just been like, okay. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get an apartment for a month, for a month or two. See you later. And then give her the spiel of, I need somebody who values me. Clearly you don't, and clearly you haven't since I've gotten to America. That like you don't give a shit. Clearly you do not give a shit about me. So see you later. And I should have just left. If I'd have done that, not only would my pride have been intact, my self worth would have been intact. I would have been hurt, but it would have been an honest hurt. It would have been an honest wound, with which I don't have to deal with for the next couple of years. Within six or seven months, I would have been okay. Still feeling a bit tentative because of obviously it's a big breakup, but I would have been okay. It took me uh, over a year, maybe more, for me to get over it, or even to start getting over this. Simply because that I, I tried to fix it, and I, and I dragged it out, and I dragged it out. I ended up seeing somebody else whilst I was over there because it was just... It was like the last days of Caligula. I'm British and I'm in suburban America. Of course women are going to be interested, right? It doesn't matter what I look like. I'm British and I'm in suburban America. There's just, you know, soccer mums, hot soccer mums everywhere, right? You're just there. If I'd have known what I know now, I would have literally gone, yeah, bye. See ya. I'm going to go and find someone else. And I did within a couple of weeks. It was, it was just physical. I mean, it was just physical, but I still found someone, you know, it was, it, and it still helped. Anyway, that's what you do. If you're if you're in a, a bad breakup, I know it's difficult. I know it's hard, and I know I've had to take my own medicine as well. There are a few people that, since I've come back that I've broken up with, and each and every single one of them, I've gone okay, bye, in a very pleasant way. Just gone, all right, bye. Yeah, okay. I've only had to break up with one person. The other two have broken up with me, and I've both gone both times. I've gone right. See ya. See you later. And that's it, right? And within 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 a few days of being like, hmm, I'm fine. I'm actually fine. I, I don't, you know. I honestly, I'm like, okay, well, clearly that person didn't value didn't value me, and the next person might. Moving on. So, let me continue the hobby nightmares. To be honest, though, this was not the hardest part. Weeks passed of constant depression and anger. I'd always had a depression problem. I'd been diagnosed with it, and it's never really left me alone. 40k was one crutch I would always use to to, to a lot to dig me out. 
After a few weeks of constant pain, I gritted my teeth, packed my models that we had painted together, and took my army to a local GT with a few friends. We got there, set and set up, and got our opponents. Excellent. I, I was starting to feel already like this was a huge mistake. The pit in my stomach was yawning, and when I got my opponent when I shook my opponent's hand, he began his first turn. I can't even remember what he was playing. Then she walked in, Michelle, with another guy. Fucking told you. Told you so. I didn't know this dude, but they were holding hands. I staggered from the table, losing my breath and feeling water rush into my mouth. I went to the toilet and proceeded to throw up my lungs. My friends eventually were sent by my opponent to make sure I was okay. What a good guy. They investigated outside and saw what was going on. One of my friends, Dave, walked straight over to her and told her where I was and what I was doing. When she went to help, she stepped, she stepped in her... He, uh, he stepped in her way and told her she needed to leave and take her new man with her. Dave is a rather large fellow, so let's just say her new guy didn't exactly uh, didn't exactly test his luck with a six foot seven uh, ex marine. <laughs> Jesus. Michelle had the absolute audacity to look shocked and hurt, but took her models and left. Her day ruined. By the by, this was two weeks after our final conversation. Wow. 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 You know what she's doing there? She's trying to claim the hobby and the divorce. <clears throat> she's replaced you with another guy. And then gone to the hobby the hobby centre that you go to. To try and claim the hobby in this in this unofficial divorce that, you have in it, that you're now having. All the things that can't be... Um, that can't be sorted out in court. She's claiming. So she wants the hobby. She, does, she wants the hobby in the local area. She wants people to be friends with her and not with you. That's what I'm thinking is happening here. I came back out and apologised to my opponent. I explained the situation fully and said I wanted to play the event but needed to get out or get out for a bit of air. So told him I'd forfeit the game no problem. He told me, no need my dude, I already forfeited. Wanna grab a beer? Wow, what a guy. And so I nodded dum dumbly and we walked out of there. What a dude, man. What a chad. What a chad. Turns out this guy was called Malik and had won a few grand tournaments in Canada and was well known on the tournament circuit. He was also a very recent divorcee, and so we bonded over a very nice few pale ales and talked about life, the universe, and everything. We finally headed back after a few hours, and I got a second game in with a, with a dude called James, and I won somehow on victory points. This meant I actually placed fifth in the tournament and earned a voucher prize for the bar next door. I passed that to Malik, and we all went out for a, for a round or seven after the event. Dude, this is awesome. This is awesome. Well done to him. What a guy. Since then, we have stayed in touch. But that's not how this thing ends. As the, as the uh, divorce proceedings are going on, I contacted Michelle and asked her what the hell was going on. And she told me, without asking, that she had only started seeing this guy after we split. So, so you didn't ask her... Uh, so you asked her what was going on, like, you know, with the, with the divorce and stuff, and she immediately told you that she was only seeing this guy after you split. Yeah, she was seeing him well before then, dude. One big, ver one big way you catch people in lies is that they start explaining the lies before you've asked. That is one big way of, of catching somebody. I, I don't believe for a second this person was not seeing that guy before, uh, before uh, the, your final conversation. Honestly, she may have been a bit confused and seeing you both, but she was still seeing you both. That those are the signs I'm seeing. I might be wrong. Don't like I'm not an expert. I might be wrong, but like that, this is the feeling I'm getting. She said she just wanted to move on. Okay, and I wanted it to stop hurting, and I still do. Why does she get to move on? Why do I need to stand here with a hole in my chest? I have no idea. The hobby helped once. But I will be honest, I have not touched my models for, for almost a year since. My friends have adopted Malik, and the group has gotten a lot stronger. They check on me, but I never want to go out with them. The drive is just not there. I just come home from work, smoke some weed, and watch TV or play video games. It's all I can stomach doing. What the hell is wrong with me? What do I do, and how do I break this cycle? Cheers, Reichenval. Okay, dude. 
I'm going to take you by the shoulders here. I'm going to take you by the shoulders. Right? You can't look at me, but I would say look at me. Right? Fuck this. Fuck this. Get out the house. And go and have a pint with your mates. I want to hear back from you. Not this weekend, because it's too short notice, but next weekend. I want to hear back from you. next A week on Monday, I want to hear back from you on that Hobby Nightmares. That you've gone out and had a few pints with your friends. Step one. That's just step one. Step two. Take all your models and have a good long look at them. Have a good long look at them. Get a few friends around at your house. And play a few 500 point games with them. Take the sting out of the pain of using these models again. Buy more models that you want to that you want to use, and make them on your own. Own your hobby again. Do not let this person poison everything good that is in your life, because you deserve happiness too. Some happiness from this divorce needs to be left for you. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. And you know what? She's winning. She's winning right now. She's leaving you in the dust. She's winning. She's living her best life. As selfish as she is, she's living her best life. What? And do you know what? She didn't want to be in the relationship. She called an end to it. That's her prerogative, man. She, that's her right. But she doesn't have a right to all of your happiness. So, get that anger in you. Dust yourself off. Get up. Go out with your friends. Play Warhammer. And stop being a fucking hermit. There's some tough love for you. But some of you need it. Stop being a hermit. Get out there. I don't care if it hurts. I don't care if it hurts. Get the fuck out of the apartment. I don't care if it hurts. Get up. Get out. Go drinking. And find, find any woman out there and start talking some shit. Start talking some shit. Doesn't matter if you want to take them home or not. Start exercising those those muscles, right? <clears throat> Get it out your system. Get it out of your system straight away. I'm not saying sleep around. I'm not saying be self-destructive. I'm saying fill your life with alternatives, my man. Yeah? Don't get with any of these women. You're still heartbroken. You're still in the process. But talk to them. Start talking shit. Start working on your social muscles again. Start going to the gym. Get yourself in there. Turn your pain. Men are really good. As soon as we turn that corner, if we're in pain, men are amazing at turning pain into effort. That's something that we do that women tend to not do. That we turn pain into effort. And whether it's in hobbying or writing or, or exercise or going out, we turn pain into bulldogging something. Make sure what you're bulldogging isn't a bag of Cheetos and it's the gym, right? Or it's going out with your friends. Or it's talking to other women and getting yourself out there and making sure that you're exercising your social muscles. Make sure that you're using the energy on something positive. She doesn't deserve to ruin your life. And that's something that I had to come to terms with myself. She doesn't deserve it. She doesn't deserve to ruin your life. Pick yourself up. Dust yourself down. And make her regret the day that she ever left you behind. Overtake her and leave her in the fucking dust. That's my advice. If you need advice, just message me again, okay? All right. That is Hobby Nightmares for today. I hope you had a really good time. We will have another video in about half an hour's time, half six. So make sure you're watching that one as well. That's a very interesting one about the state of the hobby and something else that Games Workshop have done to really, really, really annoy me. So I will see you then. Please make sure you use Composite Games for all your models this holiday season. The new news from Games Workshop about uh, going after these, these types of people is really annoying me, and that will be discussed in the next video when they're upping their prices that they're selling to these people. Absolutely horrible. Ridiculous. Hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you enjoy your weekend, and I will speak to you next time. Have a lovely day. See you then. Bye.